so we can't we can't tour here i don't know what the lockdown's like where you live but um yeah lockdown's still in effect in the uk there's not much live music at all so i have just been yeah trying to remote record luckily i have a studio um try and play as much as i can but lockdown's kind of ruined the uh, entertainment industry in the uk at the moment so it's not it's not much live stuff i've definitely noticed there'd be like lots of like online festivals and online gigs but that's kind of the way forward for now so that's what i've been doing Yeah, so was it the um, one where we recorded stuff around our house? Yeah, so that's um, that's a video called Better Off Alone, the song by Alice CJ. And we got bored during lockdown, and this is when we couldn't leave the house at all. Um, so we were like, right, we want to make music, let's record here. And um, my flatmate's a producer, um, his name's Ben Foxhall, and he's the... Uh, the guy you mentioned in the video and he's my best friend and yeah he actually helped record all my drum videos he does all the sound and everything like that um and we also are touring musicians together so he's a, a live guitarist and i'm a live drummer so yeah that was cool so we filmed things around the house like my doorbell and then changed it into a synth and then the coffee grinder and shoes hitting on the floor and foot sliding up a skateboard so many things like that and yeah created a a song. Yes, we were, but we we um we both play for a singer songwriter. So at the moment, most most of our like focus goes to that, and he writes with the singer songwriter um, who's called Luke Rainsford. So they do that together, and then they do like production together, and then I will lay drums over it. But most of the time, it's yeah them together but we did start writing together we have stuff in the background that we do for fun but we haven't released anything yet maybe one day but um that's just kind of putting our focus into other things at the moment you know i when i was growing up i, I couldn't play any other instruments well i still i'm still not amazing but in lockdown i forced myself to learn guitar and like i tried to learn piano in the last few years so I like being there in the songwriting process as much as possible. And I like learning things. And like, even when he's at the studio mixing stuff, I like to listen and put my input in. So I want to be a musician. It's just about taking that to the next level. Um, my lo main love is always going to be drums. Um, but like, I, I even like, I think it's baby steps. Like I started singing and stuff um, and doing backing vocals and stuff. So I guess I'm getting there, but I'd like to be a musician totally. I never would be able to be a front person. I like to hide at the back, but. You did a good bunch because I like all those drummers. I feel like sometimes Ringo is underrated because people, drummers, sometimes think that he plays boring or could do other things, but I think he plays perfectly for the song. And like you said, he sings, so he's more of a musician. Um, sometimes any instrumentalist will get too focused on their instrument as opposed to the whole sound and the whole song. So, um, John Bonham, sound-wise, in terms of drums, from a drummer point of view, is one of my favourite drummers ever. And that big fat sound I really look up to. Keith Moon, I, I grew up playing Keith Moon. We'll go with Ringo, though. Like you said, we'll go with Ringo because uh, his musicality is just incredible and... I think sometimes ignorantly underrated, you know, Ringo. Um, but yeah, you, you are right. I want to be a musician and I, I want to like, it's very hard to think about this kind of thing now because of COVID, especially where I live, there's just no music. But um, I think the kind of plan in my head was um, I want to be a, a session drummer. So that then you know do the, the writing side of stuff and then i wanted to work in the business i definitely think there was the like what's the word i'm looking for popularity of that kind of music with like soundcloud and 
that kind of thing coming up recently. But then you look at, I mean, I'm probably not as educated because I don't listen to that kind of music. But if you think about, for example, the kind of genre who would have done something like that. So the first thing that comes to mind is like rappers, right? So someone like Machine Gun Kelly is working with Travis Barker. And every time they play together, they do the stuff together. So I do think people want that live aspect. But I would agree with you, definitely. It's not It's not as, um. you know as transparent as it used to be, I guess. And it's not as many people playing the instruments. That's a good question. I think you just have to go out there and put yourself out there because I wasn't posting any drum videos or anything before the pandemic. Um, so kind of that side of things, I was just like, right, you've got the time, go for it now. And I think like you said earlier, it's down to your pro- your productivity can sometimes determine who you work with. I've been I've been playing drums since I was eight years old, and I I always 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 wanted a like tour, and it didn't happen to me until I was I know I'm so young, but like the last like five six years, and I just never was with the right people, and now all the time I can get work done because of my flatmate because we work well together. Um, but yeah, I think work hard, practice your craft as much as possible, um, and go for it. You have nothing to lose. And, uh, live music can just be taken away from under your feet and the entertainment industry can just be taken under your feet. So you've got to think on your toes and always have something to do. You've got to have your finger in many pies. (laughs) I think with all these kind of streaming platforms, they have um, algorithms to recommend you new music on based on what you're listening to. But that still goes back to the point you were saying, what if you are listening to Food Fighters, you're not going to listen to a little local band. Um, I don't deal with that side of thing anymore because I play for people, but I guess um, getting in playlists, I know when I used to be in a band, getting in like, a Spotify playlist or like a record labels playlist or like radio over here. We have radio one radio one's playlist. That kind of thing was where you, that's the best way you can attract new listeners because they're going there because they already know what they like and they want to hit, they want to hear new music. Now I know Spotify has something called discover weekly where it will send you new artists and new songs. They think you're like, that's just if you're open to listening to it. I think, you, the, the main kind of thing here is write a good song <laughs> write a good song catchy song and um everything goes back to social media kind of unfortunately you need to be able to get people to listen you need to find people to listen and it's not like you can go out and play loads of shows and get loads of fans now so it's i think everyone's still trying to figure it all out really in terms of life in the pandemic but to answer your question have a good song and if you have a good song and you do it properly and you are passionate about it hopefully someone will listen hopefully it will fall in the right hands hit like a girl is is a community that has a competition so initially i'm not sure but i feel like it started as a competition that's what um, made it on my radar when I was a teenager and I had not many female drummers to look up to apart from like Sheila E um, a woman over here called Sharice Say, who's amazing um, I didn't know many other female drummers as well and I, I studied at uni- I studied drums at university which sounds mad to say I have a degree in drums but I don't know there's probably like 100 200 probably like 250 people doing my course I know there was two girls and I never had a class with her so I didn't know any other girls and this is to inspire um, the next generation drummers um, whether it be young or old and make a community and um, yeah and the competition is just there to get females noticed and for me that works so I'm an ambassador for them but um, because of that kind of video i'm talking to someone like yourself so 
um, I think it's giving uh, women an equal chance, I guess. Or that's the aim. I was in my own band until last year. Um, I just, I've done that since I was very young. So at the moment, I don't think it's the best thing to do just because what we're going to be able to do apart from post music, I guess. But yes, I have. I would like to do that. I always thought that was the set um, career path. I didn't really understand how you could be a musician, especially a drummer without being in a band. So I put a lot of pressure on myself in my teenage years. I really looked up to bands like um, Paramore. They were my favorite band when I was growing up. Still probably will always be one of my favorite bands. And um, the drummer was 13 when he started touring, as in like for Paramore. So I went on Warp Tour, age 13, was signed to Fuel by Ramen, age 13. So here's me as a teenager being like, I haven't done it yet. I haven't done it yet. Um, so I think I put a lot of pressure on myself as a teenager for that kind of thing. And as I've gotten older, I realized like maybe for me right now, it's better to work independently because the artists I play for, Luke Rainsford, they, they have a live band and it kind of works like a band dynamic. Like we are allowed to get involved in writing. And um, they released a song called Lack, which was their latest single. And I was allowed to be involved in the drum parts. So uh, like I, wrote, I helped write the drum parts. So I still get to do that fun kind of things, but I definitely know those artists where I'd be working for and they wouldn't be like that. They'd be like, right, this is what you're playing. This is what you're playing live. This is the exact sound you need. Um, but yeah, I would, I would like to get involved in the band kind of stuff because I miss the whole creative process of it a bit more, but it's also nice not having to worry about, um, like you said, Spotify. And we were signed as well, so it's... It's nice to not have to worry about all that kind of stuff, I guess. I miss playing live because that was the main thing I love doing. That's something that I just, that makes me the happiest. Like I get to play drums in front of people and play with my best friends and make music and make people happy. And you can see it, it's that human connection. For example, yes, now, like you said, Spotify, et cetera, Apple Music you don't see that connection, it's just a screen. And I like, I like seeing that, so I miss that a lot. Um, I mean, I had tours canceled, so that's really gutting as well, because they were really exciting ones, but I just don't like not knowing what my future is, I think. But I mean, I'm not worried because I, I do feel like I, I know. If you want something enough, you'll work hard for it. and. Uh, not in an arrogant way, but I'm going to be a drummer. I'm not going to let a pandemic stop my life from dream. So, yeah, it, it will happen. It's just how. I think that's a great idea, um, especially in the world we are and the climate we're in right now. You can record over Zoom. Like Some of my favorite bands are literally tracking their albums over Zoom. Um, and it's incredible and it kind of shows the power of technology and and working together in collaboration so yeah i would love to do something like that and i, I love meeting new people and working with new people and um yeah I'd, I'd love to do that maybe i should get on it